In other words, Nigeria cannot but be strong except each and every one of us plays a role. We are like... We are like... Okay, this is Nigeria, so Pastor Koju is the chairman of the board. So we are the shareholders. And he tells us we didn't make any profit this year. Of course, you know, we lost start asking questions. So how many shares, Governor B, do you have in Nigeria? How many shares, Moderator, do you have in Nigeria? How many shares do I have? We each have one. But if those shares are dormant, then those few, what I call the conspiracy of the elite, they will take it. I don't know who was making the point about banks. Was it uh, was either you or Sam? Even though I do a lot of work for banks, so I, I say it with some trepidation. But the banking system is a major source of our problem. The major source. And in the Great Depression of the 1930s, Franklin Delano Roosevelt put the banks in their place by passing a law compelling banks to do the right thing. Obama also passed a law compelling banks to do the right thing. How can I stand before you and say, I dare them, all of them watching, to say whether I have ever got a dime, a loan from a bank. Never. That tells you something at my level. Never I got a loan. Not because I didn't want, because the conditions are so difficult. I swear they do not want you to have a loan. In some statistics, but since Professor said that, that statistics are questionable, but in some statistics, I read that exactly 35,000 Nigerians are the ones that get the loans all the time. That's frightful. When my daughter got a job in London after her law degree, Stock. But because it is system, it is debt capital. And because it is debt capital, it doesn't work. Those who are in property development will know. I'm in property development. What I hear and in the UK. So what I do here, if you develop one, you've got to look for, for money to do another one. You cannot index the old one to the new one because you can't get mortgages. But in the UK, money is fungible. It's a wash. Professor also mentioned the fact that the informal sector is a wash with capital. So when we say that the country is broke, I really wonder whether it is broke or we don't have a framework to get out capital in a proper way. So our biggest task, our biggest task really, is to be able to make government accountable. That's our biggest task. We have to find a way to make government accountable. The NGOs mobilize, religious community mobilize, otherwise 2019 2019 is going to be a serious war. It's going to be a serious war. Unless we pretend all is not well with our political parties. Unless you want to pretend. There are, I think, 
two major parties now PDP or the reformed PDP I don't know which <laughs> APC I'm not sure which finger but it's clear to me as a reader of politics that there are challenges so I don't know what 2019 will look like and what role we can play in that process because you know I'm tired of well with due respect to, to, to Peter Obi I'm tired of politicians shifting the sand and the goalpost for their own interest not ours so suddenly you'll find in 2019 everything will change everything will change the more you the more you look and what they will then do immediately they discover that it is to the advantage to go this way they'll go so what unites them is a conspiracy of the political elite they will exclude us they will, they will become friends when they need each other so that they can get retain political power once that power is obtained they split that is what is happening to the APC you all know that that is what's happening to the APC am I not saying the truth yes or no the APC is cracked fundamentally so I want to know where we stand in all this we have a big role in 2019 a massive role to play I was born in 1953 I am seven years older than Nigeria so I am 63 but I have never enjoyed peace never never but from my from when I could recollect the crisis through the 60s the Civil War by the way I was a boy soldier yeah in Biafra my number was BA 338 411 Yeah, I was I was conscripted. I belong to Immortal Battalion, so I've seen that part. And then I was put in detention in Biafra. At the end of the war, back to school. Now I'm about going to about twenty. Then from that time on, a succession of military governments looking for them for themselves if general Gowan were to come today you know when he looks around at lagos it's like it was when he was head of state nothing has been developed the money and i don't say to disparage all politicians because i know my governor here was a very straightforward honest politician that i know but the same cannot be said for all of your brothers my dear governor we have been stolen blind in fact you know when i charge fees i'm no longer used to charging when I hear all the billions and billions and billions published in the newspapers so a million looks very small <laughs> our money and values have been bastardized that is what we that's the challenge and i pose it to you i think as i close the church has the greatest role to play to rescue to rescue us the greatest role to play you know for me I'm a pragmatic Christian I would rather not say the rosary if I see a, a sick person that's my own my wife is the the prayer type I'm not I don't apologize for it but I will not see anybody in trouble and pass the person by that's mom that's me so we all have to do the same and the both Christians and Muslims will have to help because you see at the end of the day if a child misbehaves the parents will not leave the child alone so let us take all of us as children of God either as Muslims or Christians 
So we need to be rescued from the conspiracy of the elites. And that conspiracy is the political class with a tweak of business people with a tweak of business people those two classes have ruined this country and we need to rescue it thank you Thank you so much, Dr. Agbakova.